Well, first of all, thank you very much for joining me today, Matt. My name is Sharon Crowley, and on behalf of the charity Wouldn't Change a Thing, they have asked me to interview you about your latest book. So you're all the way in Dallas, so this is very exciting for me. Um, so, well, before we start talking about the book, um, I'm going to ask you, because did you know about Wouldn't Change a Thing? I know it's a UK charity, but... Had you heard of the charity before? I had when I was doing some, you know, research and looking around things for book for the book uh, for some details. I found it. I didn't look into it real closely. Obviously, I'm in the United States, so a lot of my resources were over here. But um, but I've certainly learned more about it since then, um, both in you know marketing the book and just reaching out and meeting a lot of people that way, like yourself. So it's been really cool. Oh, fantastic! Well. Well, I mean, let's start with the book. Oh, in fact, let's not start with the book. Let's start with a little bit about you, Matt, because obviously, again, like you say, with the different continents, we don't know a lot about you. I've done a little bit of research, but tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, your family. Sure. So um, I was born in Arizona um, and uh, lived there for a long, long time. <laughs> Grew up there. Uh, went to school there at the University of Arizona. And then um, I, I started my career as a journalist for a long time, and that brought me to Texas. Um, my wife and I were married in Arizona and I came to the Dallas Morning News and was here or was working there for about 18 years. And during that time, my wife and I had three sons. We, we still have them, obviously. They're growing up. <laughs> and uh, a, a few years ago, I left the Dallas Morning News for a position with uh, the school district here. Um, I, I live in uh, Plano and Frisco. It's right on the border. It's a suburb north of Dallas. And there's a big school district here. And I'm what they call the facilitator for athletics which basically means like a sports communications director. And I've been doing that for a few years. So uh, that's kind of my background. I'm, I've always been a lover of writing and reading. And so um, I did writing, of course, throughout my career as a journalist. And then I always thought, well, um, you know, I've done essays, I've done columns, I've done short stories, those kind of things. I want to write a novel. And uh, so I've written a couple of them now. And Three Seats from the Hero was kind of extra special to me because of uh, – some of the characteristics of the characters in the book and the things that I wanted to get into the book. So um, it has a special place in my heart. Excellent. And I am halfway through it. I'll be honest with you. Um, it was the Wouldn't Change Thing charity that um, suggested the book, but I've connected with you on Twitter and you mentioned it to me. So I'm going to ask you the question that everyone asks. Okay. Why did you write this book? Uh, well, I, I wanted to... I, like I said, I wanted to write a novel and I really wanted uh, the main character to be a character that's not represented really well in media. Um, I, I don't think that people with uh, different learning abilities are kind of represented well in media or represented accurately a, a lot of times. So um, when I started thinking about the plot for this, the story and the characters, um, I wanted that character to be the central part of the book. It's not a book that's about Down syndrome necessarily, um, I think if I was writing a book that was about Down syndrome, it would almost downplay the fact that I believe people who have Down syndrome, that's just a characteristic of their personality. It's not a definition of them. Um, so I wanted to treat that lead character, Teddy, um, in there as just like anybody else in the book. But of course, the challenges and the things that he's going through and the accomplishments, um, I wanted it to be with that kind of baseline that, you know, he had Down syndrome. Yeah, I mean, it's from what I've read so far, the way you write it is really brilliant. You know, you don't focus on the uh, the disability, you, you focus on Teddy as a person. And one of the questions that, because um, I did um, ask the Down syndrome community, what is it you wanted to, um, what, what did you want me to ask you? And one of the main questions was, did you have someone in mind when you was writing the character of Teddy? Well, I had a few people in mind, I would say. Um, my wife and I, uh, well, I should start, my wife is a special education teacher. So um, she's worked with a lot of students with Down syndrome and, and students of all different abilities and, and different things. But she has, uh, she has great experiences and, you know, I could weigh on that. And, and she would tell me all these really heartwarming stories of, of accomplishments of these kids. And uh, I thought that would be, you know, a great centerpiece for a story. In addition to that, my wife and I work with, have worked with a group called Mosaic which is not Mosaic Down Syndrome, but they're, they're named Mosaic, and they have um, adults uh, with different abilities, and they would do like birthday parties and, and special things for them, and it was really fun. And um, 
rewarding for us. So I saw some of the people there and I wanted to do, there, there was some inspiration. And then finally, as I mentioned, I was a writer for the Dallas Morning News for a long time, sports writer. And there was a high school student, uh, a boy named Lyndon LaPlante, who had Down syndrome. And in a football game, this is American football, um, a football game, both teams came together and decided they wanted to grant his wish because he couldn't play, play uh, football out there. The contact wasn't safe for him. But uh, man, he had a dream of going out there and playing. And so both teams came together and did a play where it was orchestrated, where he got a handoff and he ran the length of the field for a touchdown. And it was amazing. Um, you know, the, the crowd in the, in the stands on both sides were cheering and everything. And talking to Lyndon, um, I enjoyed getting to know him. And then a few years after that, he had kind of become a celebrity. Like he would recreate it for people and everything. It was really fun. He became an assistant coach, um, kind of a volunteer assistant coach for that football team because he got to know that head coach so well. The, the coach wanted to give him those opportunities. And I went out and then interviewed him again and talked to him about his memories from the event and also what he was doing then. He was helping with the team um, and he was so proud of everything he was doing. And the coach was so proud of him and, and, and the way he had you know, grown and progressed. And so those were kind of the inspirations for the story. And, um, and then a lot, of, you know, a lot of other media that I have seen, you know, years and years ago, I don't know if you remember this, but there was a uh, show called Life Goes On that um, th their main character was a, was a young man with Down syndrome. And I believe he was about high school age. And I was also thinking of him. I think the, the actor who portrayed that was named Chris Burke. Um, and I am dating myself a bit because I think it was in the eighties, but, um, but all of those were inspirations. And, and really anytime I see people who are, who are overcoming challenges or, or getting achievements, those were little pieces of inspiration as well. And then, as I mentioned, I do have three sons. Um, one is 17, one is 14 and one is 12. And, um, while none of them do have down syndrome, they certainly have their ups and downs and whatever they're doing and their achievements. And there were certainly pieces of that. Um, no matter what your, your child is, boy, girl, whatever you're going through, all parents know a lot of the same struggles and triumphs. And uh, so there are definitely pieces of that parenting stuff that are in the book as well. Wow. It, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? You know, um, times have changed so much um, for, um, I think, you know, most people that have uh, disabilities but certainly you know Down syndrome is close to my heart because my daughter Ella has just turned 11 um, with you know the resources that are out there the research that's been done and more importantly the communities you know there's, there's just no limits that's like my new little hashtag no limits for anybody um, you touched on your family there and I'm going to ask you um, did they you've said it did help with the, the parenting but did you have anyone in mind for any of the other characters or did they just evolve um, in, like Michael um, well you know I think in some ways um, my son uh, my two youngest sons Cooper and Nathan are a little bit like Michael maybe not as accomplished as, as they are in the book, but um, like when, when Cooper, who is now 14, um, was younger, he was in a program where he was, would go to another boy's house who had some educational um, challenges. It, it was actually social challenges. And so Cooper was in this program and my mom, or my mom, my wife was a teacher. So, uh, so she kind of volunteered him, but he went over there and was a, like a friend for this, this boy. I've got to meet him that way because they were working on these social skills. And I thought Cooper, he really liked doing that. He likes helping. He likes being a part of it and would kind of celebrate when, when uh, his friend uh, would accomplish things. And it's been that way at school, too. So I think there are little pieces of um, Cooper and Nathan, my sons, in Michael. I think my oldest son, Ryan, although he's not a baseball player like uh, David is in there, I think there's some, there's some of those, you know, knocking heads when, um, with the brothers. You know, there's that sibling rivalry and... Um, but you always know there's love in the, in the middle of it. And I, that was really important to me for that relationship of, of Teddy and his older brother, David, that, you know, they drove each other crazy at times because that's what siblings do. But when, you know, when it came down to it, they were there for each other. And that was part of the reason for this title. You know, I mean, I, I know people are going to think, well, it's, it's about Teddy. And it, and it is uh, because he dreams of being a superhero. He dreams of his moment when he's going to be that hero and everybody will think of him as the hero. But I think every character in this book has their moment of, you know, heroism, whether it's David or it's Michael or it's the parents, it's grandma. Um, mm -hmm. All those people have that moment. And uh, 
I, I wanted them to have that because everybody in the book is also going to have their down moment where they're like, I'm not proud of what happened at that point. And uh, I think we're all like that in this world. You know, we, we certainly want to remember the great things we do for people, but we all know that we're kind of flawed and we're going to make mistakes. Oh, ab absolutely. And I think, like you say, Teddy is like the central character, but the others are so, you're so strong characters that you, you really, um, like I said, I, I am only about halfway through it now, but you, you, you can feel them. And it's, that's obviously, you know, um, great writing from yourself for us to be able to imagine those characters straight away. Um, my final question to you today is, do you have any plans for another book with another, you know, um, main character that has you know maybe additional needs is, is that something you've been thinking of or are you going to do something completely different no I think that's a um, that's definitely been on my mind that I would like to do that um, the the book process can be both be uh, really rewarding but also really challenging it's such a, a long process um, and you know when you're marketing one as three seats from the hero just kind of came out you, you have dreams of the next one but you're kind of like you know just weeds deep in, in, in doing this one but I think uh, it would be great to do another one. I think it, it's such a it's such a great starting point for a really good book to have have a person who you know maybe is kind of seen as an underdog unfairly, um, and but but then it gives them that much more mountain to climb, and uh, it can make it really rewarding for the story and uh, developing all the characters. I mean, I love Teddy as I, I think I was mentioning in, in when I was talking to somebody else. He became really real for me as I'm writing this, because it's like spending time with him when you're writing all these stories um, and what he's going through. Um, but all the characters, I wanted all those characters to be really rich around him, um, really developed because Teddy, I wanted him to be treated like, just like anybody else. He has Down syndrome, but he has some things he's, he's great at. As Michael says in there, hey, you're better at me, at, you know, at doing the piano. You're better at doing these kind of things. He is, he's good at some things. He's not so good at some other things as we all are. Uh, many things that I'm not good at. My wife will tell you that. <laughs> My kids will tell you that. But um, I wanted them all to be really good characters around him because by being good characters around him, they show how much Teddy grows too. All the characters grow, but I really wanted people to see the possibilities that were there with Teddy, um, all the things that he can do, all the things that all the characters can do. And it's been really rewarding hearing from people who you know find themselves relating to a certain character and that sort of thing. So. Um, I really appreciate you uh, giving me some time to talk about it here and it's been great talking about it. Oh, no, thank, thank you so much for your time. I can, can only imagine how busy it is. Um, just to finish off, obviously, I downloaded it on Kindle, so there is a Kindle version, um, but the, are there other versions, paperback, hardback? Yeah, there's a, there's a Kindle version and then there's a paperback version and both are available through Amazon. Um, that's the easiest way. And as one thing I'll ask as, um, as a... I want to say a struggling author, but like a small author, you know, we're trying to spread the word um, mm. is that please, if, if for people, when they finish the book, um, please, if you have a chance, leave a review on Amazon for authors, it is such an important thing or good reads uh, for authors. It's such a big, big way to spread the word about your book because even people who really enjoy a book tend to not leave a review. And I'm like this way too. If I get something from Amazon and I really like it, I don't necessarily think about leaving a review. We're all really busy. But um, authors who do, do get those reviews, we always read them, absolutely, and we're always thankful. And, and, you know, we always like to hear from people, too, if they're like, well, what about if you would have done something a little different in the book? Hey, I'm, I'm always great. It's always great to hear those kind of things because it means people are reading, and I'm very appreciative of all the readers. So thanks very much for your time today, Matt. Oh, thank you. It was nice meeting you through this, uh, our Zoom way. That's our way of life now, and uh, I appreciate the time to talk about it. It was fun. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.